Hi, I'm Troy, and welcome back to another On the Road video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Today we're going to replace the rear drum seal on this Kenmore dryer. You could be having an issue pertaining to a squeaking or squealing or possibly even a grinding noise because of the bad seal. To complete this repair, you will need a 5 16 nut driver, Phillips head screwdriver, and a putty knife. To start this repair, we're going to start by removing the lint screen. With the lint screen removed, we have to take out these two Phillips screws. As you are removing the two Phillips screws, just be careful not to drop them down into the lint housing because they will go down into your blower and you'll have to remove even more parts to retrieve them. So when you're taking them out, just be careful that you do not drop them. So after removing the, the, the lint screen and the two screws, we're gonna go ahead and pop the top up so we can fold it back so we can access the inside. On this particular unit, the way you're gonna do so is you're gonna follow the top piece back and you're gonna basically pull forward and lift up at the front. Put your foot in the front of the unit, pull from the back, a little bit forward, and then lift up to release it. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Once you got it pulled up and released, you can now fold the top back up so it's open and out of your way. On this particular unit, we're now gonna go ahead and remove the bottom kick plate. This one is held on by two tabs on the sides, so you're basically gonna grab the unit, the bottom part, and pull it forward. Once you pull it forward on one side, pull the other side forward, the unit will fall forward, and you can now remove it off its bottom hanging clips. Now with the kick plate removed from the bottom, you'll notice that up under here there's a screw and then there's another one on the other side those screws are what are what are holding the front panel or the door in place there's two screws at the top but the bottom ones it hangs on or sits on so we're going to loosen these bottom ones just a little bit because now with them loosened, when we remove the top screws, we'll be able to pull out and lift the whole front panel off the unit. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the wires down here. They go to the door switch, the screw up here, and the other screw over here, so we can then free this door, front panel, and remove it from the unit. I'm gonna start by just removing the wiring harness from the actual door. Once that's removed, I can come down and remove the three wires that go to the door switch. Before removing the wires, I would make note of where they actually connect to the door switch. You can write them down or take a picture, either way, so then when you put it back together, you have them in the right position. So now what we're gonna go and do is remove the two screws that are holding the front panel in place. We're gonna remove them from each side. When you remove them, hold the door up with your leg so it doesn't fall forward on you. So now that your screws are removed, you're able to remove the front panel. You're basically going to pull it forward just a little bit. It's gonna free itself from the drum. And once it's free, you're gonna lift up and take the unit off and set it aside. Now with all the panels removed, the drum is setting here. We've removed the belt from the idler pulley and now all we're going to do is lift the drum out of position and take it out of the unit. So now we're gonna remove the felt seal so that we can replace it. This seal is, is significantly worn all the way around. Um, so to remove this, it is glued to the outside 
of the drum. So you're just gonna have to re remove it. It's either gonna already be gone or you're gonna have to remove it yourself. You can pry it off uh, with your fingers. You can use a putty knife to get it started. Because once you get it started, then it should pull right back off for you. So I'm gonna use my putty knife to get up and under and just get through the actual seal to break it free. So I've got it broken free. I should be able to start pulling it off all the way around the unit. Once you've got the seal off, you will notice that we still have remnants of it all the way around. You're gonna wanna use your putty knife um, or razor blade and remove as much of this as possible so that you've got as clean of a surface as you possibly can to reattach the new seal. So now that you've removed all the seal and as much of the adhesive and stuff from the surface of the drum, we're now going to install the new drum seal. With your new drum seal, you're gonna notice that it has stitching and is smooth on one side, and it's gonna be felty on the other side. You're typically gonna have one colored stitch and then other colored stitches on this actual seal. The red in this particular one is going to go to the drum side of the drum meaning that the white stitching is gonna to be towards the outer part of the actual drum. The other side, you're going to have this lip or fold, and this is where the edge of your drum goes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on one side, and we're gonna take and slide the red part out and over, and making sure that the felt lip is on the inside of the drum and we're gonna work our way all the way around until this seal is positioned on the drum around the whole unit. Depending on how warm or cold your actual seal is, it may need to be stretched a little bit. It may not go right on. As you can see on this one, it is not the same diameter as the drum. So it will require a little bit of finesse to get it on there. It could also, depending on how it's going for you, require a second person to hold it in place on one side. So then you can work your way towards each other and get it over the lip edge and get it back onto the drum. So right now, I've got it all the way on. We're gonna just make sure that it's pushed all the way down around the whole drum. Now with it pushed all the way down, we're going to notice that this lip is on the inside of the drum and this is where it rides against the back panel of the actual dryer. So we're gonna now go ahead and turn it on its side just so I can show you better. With it on its side, the seal's back on here all the way around. The red stitching is towards the drum. The white stitchings are told towards the outside or towards the back part of the dryer when it's installed. What we're gonna do now is under here is where we're going to apply our adhesive. We're gonna apply it all the way around. So we're gonna apply it and set it back down and just keep working our way all the way around the whole unit till it has got adhesive all the way around. And then you have to let that adhesive set and adhere before using the actual dryer again. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take the adhesive that came with the unit and we're gonna apply it to the underside of the seal 
to adhere it to the actual drum. So we're gonna start and just apply it underneath it and just keep applying it underneath the drum. See as we work along and you'll be able to see that you start getting some buildup. You can kind of get your eye in there and see that the seal or that the adhesive is going in. You may have to stop and roll it. I've got something down underneath the drum so if any adhesive comes out it's not getting on the customers or your own carpeting or flooring. And once you've got all the way around, you're going to then make sure that you've got your drum seal pushed back. So it's so the lip again is pushed back against the drum and that you're getting adhesion to all the adhesive that you put on the unit. If you push it in there and squeeze it, you'll probably notice on mine that there's adhesive squeezing back out. I'm just gonna apply that all the way around so I know that I've got glue coming out of everything. Now after you've got the seal pushed back in place all the way around, um, what I'm doing now is just removing the excess adhesive. It's actually on the unit. And I'm paying particular attention to the actual groove right here because that is where your, your rollers ride. Now that we've got the seal in place and glued down, you may just want to one more time go back through and make sure it's pushed in place and that the outer edge is adhered to the drum. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and start reassembling the dryer. Now this is where you're going to want to reference where your wires connected to on the unit, where they went to on your switch. The wires probably will stay pretty much in the same position, but I'm going to reference back to the picture I took so that I know which wires go on which terminal. Now that we've got those wires put back on, we can close the top of the unit. Again, tech tip, mental note, make sure you do not drop your screws down the vent housing. So I would start them a little bit by hand Now the top's on, we can now secure the bottom of the front panel and reinstall the kick plate. So up under each side, there's going to be two spots where the spring hangs from, and then there's two holes at the bottom where the spring hooks into. You're gonna to wanna to be able to look under there and find the hanger. Once you set it on its hanger, pull down position to the bottom. Find your hanger, secure to the bottom. You need those or your door will just fall flat down. That way it makes it so you have tension on your door. Once you got the springs back in place, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the two bottom screws. Once the two bottom screws are tightened in place, you can take your kick panel, slide it onto the two tabs. The 
and secure back to the unit. And that completes your repair of the drum rear seal. Thank you for watching another quality repair video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.